Hi, I'm Dr. Jack Cush coming to you from ULAR 2023, where I want to review for you the recently presented ULAR Press, standing for the Pediatric Rheumatology European Society, recommendations on the management of systemic JIA and adult onset stills disease. Um, these were presented on the final day, Saturday, the 3rd of June. Um, it was a interesting presentation from Fautrell and Di Benedetti with um, three overarching principles and 14 uh, recommendations. Uh, before I give those to you, I want to put this in context by reviewing for you quickly the ACR recommendations that were uh, published in 2022, and those are titled the 2021 ACR Guidelines for the Treatment of Systemic JIA. In this guideline, they had nine recommendations, uh, most of which were conditional or weak evidence and basically expert opinion. Um, they said that all patients should be tried on non-steroidals or steroids and then move on to biologics, um, and that's sort of an option, a conditional recommendation. They also conditionally recommended as first-line therapy biologic therapy with an IL-1 or an IL-6 inhibitor, and that's strongly recommended over the use of steroids or um, monotherapy steroids or single or combination disease-modifying therapy. They recommended against monotherapy with steroids. If you were an SJIA patient who developed macrophage activation syndrome, they strongly recommended uh, glucocorticoid therapy, IL-1 or IL-6 inhibitors, um, before you use a calcineurin inhibitor alone, and they had no preferred agent here. Uh, and that for patients with continued symptoms, a biologic or conventional synthetic DMARD could be used, and that patients with MAS should be strongly evaluated for infection. So now about a year later, uh, ULAR Press comes up with its guidelines. The overarching principles were that number one, and maybe most important, is that systemic JIA and adult onset stills disease are the same disease. And the FDA has confirmed this recently in some of its actions. And they, this committee suggested it all be called stills disease. That the arbitrary cutoff of an age of 16 doesn't make any sense anymore. This is a continuum. There's a, an initial peak of onset of disease early in childhood, but after that, it's a, it's a long tail uh, of disease, and this is still a young person's disease. This is not an old person's disease, but it could happen in the elderly. Second, that the important is shared decision-making in choosing therapy between the patient and the clinician. And lastly, that macrophage activation syndrome needs to be strongly considered, always suspected, promptly diagnosed, and promptly treated to avoid the significant morbidity and mortality associated with it. So getting into the specific recommendations, number one, that you can probably make a more rapid diagnosis and institute treatment earlier if you consider the diagnosis based on this triad, these three symptoms, one, fever greater than 39, two, the evanescent stills rash, and three, markers of high inflammation. I really like this triad. I think it really should be required for all patients being considered with Stills disease. I think you can confirm the diagnosis by using Yamaguchi or Cush criteria. Number two in the recommendation is that they are supportive of using IL-18 levels or S100 protein levels, calprotectin, in the diagnosis and management of the disease. I think this rec reflects the research agenda of people involved in this committee. I don't think it makes any sense since IL-18 and calprotectin and other S100 proteins are not really available. It's a nice idea. I don't know that it belongs in the guidelines, but it's in the guidelines. Number three, it's important to exclude other diagnoses. You do this. Exclude infection, neoplasia, other immune-mediated inflammatory diseases, and also, maybe more specifically, uh, monogenic auto-inflammatory disease. And I would, my editorial note here is that when patients are atypical, in their presentation of stills disease, especially if it's not daily fever that doesn't go away, or it's intermittent fevers, then you might want to be doing genetic testing looking for a monogenic auto-inflammatory condition. Recommendation number four, that they define um, clinically inactive disease, CID. This is a common uh, term 
in the pediatric and SJIA literature, not often used by adults, but should be adopted by adults. Uh, CID means no still symptomatology and a normal SED rate in CRP. The definition of remission would therefore be um, CID for greater than six months. Recommendation number five, they give you specific treatment targets, things that should happen by this schedule. And if not, you have to rethink the diagnosis and the approach. By day seven, no fever and a significant reduction, 50% or more of the CRP. By week four, no fever and systemic uh, and swollen joint count reduced by 50%. At three months, clinically inactive disease with be, the possibility of being on low dose glucocorticoids. And at six months, clinically act, inactive disease without glucocorticoids. So those are the goals of therapy or the targets of therapy. Recommendation number six, they say it's okay to use non-steroidal for symptom control, maybe use initially, same for glucocorticoids, but they strongly recommend uh, against long-term use of glucocorticoids. Recommendation number seven, in line with the ACR recommendations is that IL-1 and IL-6 inhibitors should be used first line as soon as possible. Recommendation number eight, that if a patient is on DMARDs, you can begin to taper after three to six months of clinically inactive disease and get off of the steroids. We're giving you basically a, a permission to withdraw DMAR therapy. That would include biologics if you have remission for three or more, three or six months or more. Number nine, look for complications, specifically macrophage activation syndrome and also the newly described chronic lung disease that is seen with patients who have systemic JIA. Number 10, strongly suspect MAS. And the predictors of MAS, you know, very, very high ferritin levels, a precipitous reversal of the high cell counts, high white count, high platelet count, to being leukopenic and, um, and thrombocytopenic, along with other markers of MAS. Number 11, they say to treat MAS aggressively, first with high-dose glucocorticoids, and then add either anakinra or um, uh, cyclosporin or a gamma interferon inhibitor, such as emipalumab, which is FDA approved in the United States. Number 12, if patients are having symptoms, you should actively screen for lung disease. And as we've mentioned in other videos, this presents as either ILD, al pulmonary alveolar proteinosis, and sometimes pulmonary arterial hypertension. They also recommend that you strongly consider the use of, uh, of advanced imaging, including um, uh, high-res CT scans. Um, no, uh, recommendation number 13, that there is, uh, for patients who have uh, chronic lung disease, there's insufficient evidence to automatically stop the IL-1 or IL-6 inhibitor. We need more information before we um, have a recommendation on that. And the last recommendation is that the patient has difficult to manage um, Stills disease or uh, MAS or they develop lung disease associated with Stills disease. It's important that you co-manage this patient with an expert Stills disease referral center. So again, many of these are in line with the ACR 2021 systemic JA guidelines. I think these will be very well received uh, and we'll see uh, how they impact therapy. Tune in for more from ULAR 2023.